The ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 357, maybe, of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and to be honest, my tummy hurting. I feel I feel all sicky. My tummy hurt and I feel all sicky, and I keep uh, going to the toilet and then nothing happens because, and I think it's because, yeah, and by the way, yes, if this is your first episode, welcome to the show. This is what most of the episodes are, uh, just incoherent rambling about whatever I'm currently feeling. It's more of a stream of consciousness than a podcast. Uh, and and sometimes I feel like I want to shit myself uh, and that's the hour. Uh, just me thinking, oh, do I need to go? No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I had a, uh, I ran out of magnesium the other day, so I brought a new type of magnesium, popped one last night to go to sleep because I care about sleeping well. And uh, instead of sleeping well, I I just uh, got up six times to the bathroom and nothing happened. Uh, I just I just I'm in mean, a I feel like I'm in purgatory. I'm in a perpetual state of about to shit myself, but the poo never comes. And I and I like I've, I I don't know. I'm gonna move on. All right. Well, welcome to the episode. Um, I feel like this is probably a great opportunity to plug the new merch. <laughs> Uh, this is your last day to buy the uh, Spearhead Sundays episode 350 commemorative Lewis Spears Pizza Parlor merch to celebrate 350 episodes without missing a single one. Not a single missed episode since the show started. LewisSpears.com. It's pre-order only and the pre-orders close tomorrow. So this is your last day. I am uploading this uh, on a Sunday afternoon. So you've got, I don't know, 6, 12 hours depending on when it is. Australian time. All right. Go get it, loosebiz.com. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to be putting the money to good use. I'll tell you that because a big opportunity just came up for this show, and uh, but it is gonna it is gonna require quite a significant investment from me, and that's what we're going to be putting all of this money towards. Okay. Um, in fact, if we have to, all of the money that you give me, I might not even send out the t-shirts. I might just spend it on the initiative. No. I wouldn't do that. That's a scam. All right, I don't do that. Um, I'm, but I, I'm play, I am planning on doing that with uh, some some sort of cryptocurrency initiative where you give me all your money and you trust me, and then I just pocket it and run. That's something that's uh, in the pipeline uh, for the future because obviously, with me working on YouTube a lot more, it just seems like great business synergy to just uh, take the trust of you, the viewer, and uh, flush your savings down the toilet on Skibbity Boobar coin or something like that. Anyway. Uh, what we're going to use just the profits uh, for this uh, merchandise collection on is this. So Alex Jones from Infowars is being sued to something ridiculous like $1.5 billion, like just an obscene amount of money. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? I do believe potentially he may have been wrong about Sandy Hook being a false flag operation. I think that there is a, there is a small chance that maybe all of these parents haven't been pretending that their kids are dead for decades for fun. <laughs> you know, I think there's a small chance that maybe he uh, did a little oopsie on that one. You know, every now and then he fucking nails it. Like the chemicals on the water are turning the frogs gay. Well, they weren't turning gay. They were actually changing genders. Uh, but also that's probably more horrific. Anyway, I don't think it was appropriate to accuse uh, dozens of grieving parents that they were just uh, pretending for money. <laughs> don't think that he should have done that. So he lost his defamation case uh, and he has to pay the families $1.5 billion. Now, not defending what Alex has done because it's obviously terrible, but why is that like the most amount of money you can lose in a court case, like I've seen companies spill oil and fucking destroy local fishing economies, get fined a couple mil. Like, why the fuck can we find the crazy InfoWars guy, one and a half billion dollars, but when a fucking oil company destroys a habitat of an endangered animal? or completely fucks up an ecosystem, or destroys an ancient uh, Aboriginal sacred place after promising that they wouldn't do it. Why do they just get like a, like a couple million dollars? Like they have more money 
than Alex Jones, and they've arguably caused much more damage to the material world. I don't, I just don't, when I see the $1.5 billion, like, lawsuit that he has to pay, I'm like, oh, so we, so if it comes down to it, we can actually make companies really, really hurt for fucking up really badly and intentionally, but we decide to use those powers on the crazy website guy and not the fucking oil companies or the banks that, that hand out malicious home loans and payday loans and prey on fucking vulnerable communities or insurance companies that scam their customers or, or government officials that accept bribery and fuck over the communities that trusted them with their votes. Like, sure, not defending what Alex has done, but why is he the one that gets hit with the $1.5 billion fine when people have done way worse? That is just, I don't know, fucking crazy. Not that, you know, obviously... What he's done is fucking horrific, but it's uh, it's crazy that like that's one of the biggest uh, defamation, like settlement court punishment things ever. But you know, governments can fucking do war crimes, and we're just like, um, you know, you're dismissed from your military position. <laughs> one guy who wasn't really involved. <laughs> But anyway, this is where the opportunity comes from. So, uh, and again, this is another reason why I'm not defending Alex Jones because I actually want him to be fined even more because the more he gets fined, the more he has to sell. And here's the thing, all right? What they're doing to Alex Jones is they're forcing the sale of everything that he owns. Now, what does he own? Obviously, he owns cameras. I could do with a, with a good camera upgrade. That'd be great. Like a, like a nice... Uh, you know, a nice 6K camera that was bought with uh, vitamin money, you know, just scamming fucking red pill right wing nutters, QAnon freaks into eating uh, vitamins that make you want to shit yourself, but then you don't actually poo. That's where I got the magnesium from. I'm, I'm coming clean. I got it from InfoWars. It is InfoWars magnesium. Uh, the Look, the ads just sucked me in, all right? He's a very charismatic man. <laughs> um, but... Obviously, okay, equipment, whatever. That'd be cool. Get a nice little bargain. But you know what else he owns? The InfoWars set and the website. They're making him sell it. Like he's not allowed to own it. They're making him liquidate every single thing that that business owns and operates. So big opportunity here. This is why you got to buy the t-shirt. Imagine how good Spearhead Sundays would be if it was recorded from the InfoWars set. If I got it shipped over from Alex Jones's compound in Texas to Frankston and, and, and I just sit in the magnificent InfoWars set and I don't change the logos and I don't change the transitions and I use the same microphone that makes it sound like this and every single episode is welcome to, welcome to Spirits on Days. I reckon if I sat in that desk long enough, I would become schizophrenic. 100%. I would. I, I feel like there's so much cursed, demonic, conspiracy energy that aliens have been firing directly into Alex Jones's brain that a lot of it would pass through his brain and and absorb into the desk. And if I sat at the desk, it would bounce up and and enter my mind through the metal in my chin. And Spirit Sundays would go from. Oh, my tummy hurts. I feel like I'm going to shit myself to the Jews control the banks. How good would that be? It, I mean, I don't think it would last very long. I would get taken down for violating community guidelines pretty quick, but it'd be a fun ride. It'd be a fun ride to the bottom. Okay, even better idea. How good would this be? Bi-monthly bull from the InfoWars set. <laughs> that'd be good. I go to an anti-vaccine rally, but I'm but I'm not there to find a doctor. I'm just there for the rally. Today we're at we're at an anti-vaccine rally to lend our support. Let's go, brothers. I've got my sign. It's just fucking four hour long march <laughs> with 60 people. That'd be great. That look, we all know I'm take I'm taking a big swing at YouTube, which I'll get into later in this episode. But that that's an avenue for me, you know? If this big swing doesn't work, there's always the right wing red pill avenue. That's always there. For every comedian, entertainer, YouTuber, it's always there. 
there's three avenues for you, all right? If uh, if things start going poorly, you just start becoming a culture wars guy and you start doing videos about uh, race tension, why women suck, uh, and, uh, and why fat people are gross. Yuck. That's what you do. Uh, or you can go religious. That will that gun is less views, but way more support. And and what you get out of those religious freaks is you get you get money, okay? Because you go, God, just really, really, I have a plan. I have a plan, and I can't tell you what that plan is, but I need you to know that God has spoken to me, and has told me that you need to give me one million dollars for my plan, and I have a plan, and it's sent from God Himself, and the plan is so holy. And so blessed that I actually can't divulge God's plans for you through me. Other than this one very important point, which is my PayPal link. And you need to send it using the the sending money to friends option, not using the business option because then they, then they take a transaction fee. And God doesn't want your $100 to go through a 1.35% transaction fee because that money is for me. Yes, this money will be put towards buying the InfoWars desk to become schizophrenic. Welcome to Schizophrenic Sundays. I'm your host, Louis B. Ah, is that my dead grandmother? Oh, actually, it's the devil. That's and how good would that be? So that's that's what we're putting all of the merch money towards is we're going to buy the Infowars desk. I'm not kidding by the way. They're going to make him sell everything. Here's what's interesting though, all right? What they also want to do is they want to completely take away Infowars from him because it's gone bankrupt. And that's fine because that's what happens when a business goes bankrupt, all right? You fucking you lose a, you know, you say that many lies, the family sue you, they win, they're entitled to their money. Your business has got to pay it, so you lose your assets. That's fucking business, baby. Um, but what they want to do is they want to take away his Alex Jones social media accounts too, which I don't like at all because I... I, I feel like at this point, like access to internet and social media is borderline a human right, you know? Um, and I don't think that you should be able to force a person to sell a social media account that is like, like the Lewis Spears account. Like that's me. You know, I am that person. You can't fucking sell that or force me to sell what is you know, almost like a version of an ID, right? Like that's like an identification or or like personhood. That Because that's re- like, really, that's what an internet presence is. It's just like a version of a, of a personhood, a fucking this is who I am. Uh, so, you know, forcing him to sell the business and all that kind of stuff, that makes sense because business is a business. It's not a real person. But like, I don't know, making, forcing him to sell personal social media accounts is I don't like that at all I feel like it's a scary power and a bad precedent to set uh that could only escalate but I don't know what do you guys think also you know obviously I am going to be bidding as much as I can afford on the Infowars set and the Infowars website and the branding and the trademark I doubt that I'll be able to afford it because I I feel like I'll I've, I'm gonna max out at like fifteen to twenty dollars depending on how many people listen to this jump onto the Patreon and buy the T-shirt of course, um but I, but I would say you know if if you listening right now jumps on the five dollar Patreon tier, that's like twenty dollars that we could bid on the set and I'm hoping that a lot of other people just think that it's so cursed that they don't want to buy it. And it's like, you know, you know what I'll do? I'll treat it like eBay. You know when you really want something on eBay and it's it's at that auction, all right, before all these sellers started doing buy it now only? Cowards, all right? Fucking gamble, dude. Ride the dragon. All right, if you're an eBay seller and every item you have is, is buy it now, fuck you, all right? You're ruining the website. eBay is for auctions. It's a digital auction website. 
I remember 2009 fucking bidding on rare video games and getting them, sniping them last minute. There's three seconds left in the auction. $7 bid, bam, sold, bargain. Or the last two minutes of the auction and I'm watching it and there's 10 other people watching it. And then there's two minutes to go and some fucking idiot bids 10. Oh, you're ruining it for everyone. Now a bidding war starts with two minutes to go. You fucking idiot. You don't know how sniping works? When there's three seconds left, bam, $7 bargain. But no, people have a minimum that they want to sell the item for. Fuck you, you dog. You're standing between me and my comic books. <laughs> I spit on you. Hock tour. I hock tour upon you. What I'm saying is I don't think that I will be able to afford the InfoWars branding, but I do wonder who is going to buy it. Like, who do you think buys that? Here's what I think happens. I think Alex Jones's like friends bail him out or some like, like I could see like some kind of daily wire operation buying all of the IP for InfoWars and then paying Alex Jones a salary to then host it and then put him in some kind of fucked 360 deal trap like uh, like half the rappers that you like to listen to where he just has to work like a slave to pay off the debt that he, owe, that he owes the company that bought his company and then employed him to run his own company. I reckon that's probably what will happen is a bunch of like insane investors will be like, let's fucking, let's buy InfoWars and then shackle Alex Jones to it and he has to host it forever. But that's a risky, that is a risky gamble, isn't it? Because very, very likely that you buy InfoWars for like, I don't know, a few million dollars. That money gets distributed amongst the families of the Sandy Hook massacre. And then Alex Jones does episode one and, and he just starts off by going, trans people were invented by Jews who were controlled by aliens. And then your whole website just gets banned. <laughs> and you go, fuck. There goes our money. So be interested to see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated. And and I'll be placing a bit on the InfoWars desk. Surely at least I could get like some of the stock of his vitamins, you know? I, I am in, I am on, on the market for some new magnesium. Um, all right. So I want to talk about the, the big swing that we've uh, been going on. Wow, it's working. Um, I have uh, done three videos over the last seven days and it's really, really, really working, dude. Um, the first video went okay, but a lot better than the last ones. What I'm doing, if you're just listening to this for the first time, I have decided to just forego all of the other social media websites, all the stand-up clips, all the Real Talk stuff, uh, and I'm just going to do YouTube properly because that worked really well with this show. At the start of the year, I just went, I'm not going to do YouTube. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to focus on doing the podcast well, getting into the habit of doing it, making sure we're on time, making sure we don't miss any episodes for an entire year, which I've never done. Sorry, I've, I've never missed an episode. Uh, loosebiz.com by the merch. Uh, but there is a little bit of hearsay and rumor and conjecture that maybe I may have missed more than half of the episodes that were supposed to come out since the inception of the show, but that's all rumor and I vehemently deny it, okay? Infowars, I need the desk, buy the merch. Um, but uh, that really worked and the podcast has been growing and it's been consistent. You guys have been jumping on the Patreon a lot more and that's fucking awesome. Uh, and uh, I just thought, you know what? It was stressing me out after coming back from this UK tour. It was stressing me out so much trying to juggle YouTube and stand-up clips and and short clips and TikTok and everything else and trying to do podcast clips for the shorts platforms and all that shit was stressing me out so much because it's just me now. I don't have anyone helping me. Uh, Keelan's on the run in, in the UK because he, he's trying to avoid extradition to the United States because of all the horrible things he did to those homeless people there on live stream on kick. Very funny, but whatever. Um, I uh, just was like, okay, well, let's instead of stressing out of all of the things that I feel like I have to do, I'm just going to do two things properly. I'm doing the podcast. I'm nailing that. That's been going great. It doesn't freak me out anymore. It doesn't stress me out. I'm so much healthier. I'm doing that really well. Let's see if we can add in just YouTube. And literally the only thing I'm doing is I'm making a great video 
I'm scripting some great jokes and I'm making a really fucking good thumbnail and title. And that's it. And we're just going to be a YouTuber, a very funny one, until the end of the year. And we're just going to see what happens. I'm going to be uploading at least once a week. I'm trying for two. I'm just going to do good topics that YouTube likes, that people are interested in, and make them as funny as possible. I'm making them a bit longer because that's what people seem to really enjoy. I mean, I know that when I open up YouTube on my TV or my phone or the computer when I'm eating, I kind of don't really want to watch a video that's less than 10 minutes. You know, I'm looking for those 15, 20, sometimes 30 minute videos because I'm eating food. Like that's how I consume content on the website now. So if I can tap into that market, that's what we want. So the first video, we put out one on Smart Schoolboy 9, a fucking freak from the UK. All right. It does pretty well. It's uh, after three days or after eight days, it's sitting on 29,000 views. That's great. Okay. For context, the previous video <laughs> did 8,000. All right. So not great. The next video though, I do a video about Mr. Beast Lunchly. 132,000 views in two days. 132. It's still going up. It was at like 115 this morning. So it's got another 15,000 views just today. Love it. All right. We're fucking on. YouTube was like, oh, this guy's doing something a bit different. Let's push his videos a little bit more. Then just yesterday, I drop a video on P Diddy. I put it out on that at 11 PM on a fucking Saturday night. It's already at 25,000 views. So it's going to eclipse the first video. It hasn't even been 24 hours. It's been 13 hours, 25,000 views. The last video that had that many views in this much time ended up on about 70,000 views. And they're all three of them are great videos that were like, not easy for me to make, but like so much easier for me to make than they have been previously because I've been trying to juggle. Oh, I can't film. I got to edit this clip. I can't do this clip. I got to film this video. I can't do the podcast. I got to edit. I got to post these things. Like I am one man and I'm acknowledging that. Now I'm getting a lot of comments from a lot of returning viewers and new viewers talking about how good the videos are. And that's awesome. And I asked for you guys to comment on the videos as they came out. And it's really, really working. I'm looking at my analytics on the phone, right? And it tells me this video is being pushed into recommendations more because of the high level of engagement. That's comments and likes. So if I'm putting out videos and, you know, fucking seven, seven or 8,000 people listen to this show every week, if the video within the first few hours gets like a couple hundred comments that are like relevant and about the, the video, YouTube's like, oh, people like this, they're engaged. Push it out, push it out, push it out. So if I can ask for one thing from you guys, obviously watch them, but fucking leave a comment, leave a like. It makes the biggest difference in the world. And since I've been telling people to do that in the videos as well, it really makes a difference, man. I mean, kind of like not doing that because it's like, oh, I don't want to be some fucking lame YouTuber asking for likes and comments, but fucking if you ask for like and comment, people do it. It works. So yeah, man, this is like, this is the big swing. I, I really feel like it can work and I feel like it's the key to uh, making enough money to bring Keelan back on board. I mean, after the sentencing uh, to really do this shit properly and... Uh, yeah, so I've got no shows till the end of the year, till like January or February, maybe. Uh, we're just doing YouTube and the podcast. And I'm so grateful to everyone jumping on board and being excited about it. I've gotten so many comments from you guys that are basically saying things along the lines of, I'm so glad that Broke Lewis is back. <laughs> hey! You should be, you should be rooting for me. You know, I've, I've gotten about 25 different comments from people going, oh, I, I'm so happy that Lewis is fucking broke because his videos are so much better. Hey, that's not true. People are going, oh, the warehouse era is back. I'm so happy that Lewis has no money and he's poor. The videos are better. You want me in the dirt for yourself. You're being selfish. You want me in the dirt. Poor, impoverished for your entertainment. The warehouse era was so good because I was not so sick. Not because I was broke. 
it might have a little bit to do with being very broke and being and desperately not being able to afford even the meager amount of rent on the warehouse that I was paying, but it's because I was very unwell that it took a big downturn. All right? Okay, I'll be honest. I am working a lot harder because I am very broke, all right? But if it becomes financially successful, I'm going to keep it going. I'm going to stack it up, baby. I'm chasing the bag. I'm in my bag chasing era, okay? We, get, we are going back to the warehouse era. I'm not even on jeans money anymore. I used to pay myself $400 a week. And I would still have savings and pay all my bills. I'm going to be real, guys. I just buy food now. <laughs> I just buy food now. And God, is it expensive. <laughs> I'm, I've... I've I've gone from four hundred dollars a week was jacket money. Then I think it what was it? It was like I can't remember what three hundred was. I think three hundred was like jeans money, maybe. I can't remember. Two hundred dollars a week was shoe money, where every now and then I could buy some shoes if I wanted some shoes. And then anything, and then like a hundred dollars a week. Yeah, uh, uh, that's where I'm at, guys. I'm on food money again. 100 bucks a week to, to sustain my body and keep me alive. That's where we're at. We're, we're going down to the, what is it? The fucking, the, the, we're going down to the, the lowest pyramid, pyramid on the hierarchy of needs. Oh no, we're at level two, all right? We've got shelter. Oh no, food is first, so we're on level two. We got food, we got shelter. That's where we're at. That's the hierarchy of needs. Hopefully we can get to the tip of that pyramid again. But until we do, I'm going to be grinding YouTube, baby. The big swing is in is pro in progress. I'm swinging. I'm a swinger. Many people are saying this. Um, how long were you going here for? Oh, okay. Anyway, I wanted to talk about this Chapel Roan drama. Chapel Roan is this huge singer who uh, she's a gay woman. Uh, she has created like 15,000 of the lesbian anthems of the year. She's all over TikTok all the time. I love her. She's so good. I love her music. I, I play it all the time. I pump Big Pony Club. Like when people were, were saying online that you should not bring straight men to Chapel Roan, I was reading that going, I'm not retweeting. I'm I will be in attendance. If she comes to Australia, I'm going to go to the Chapel Roan show. Straight as fuck. I'm going to go there and be like, yes, yes, queen. How good's pussy? That's going to be me at the Chapel Roan show. I'm an ally, whether you like it or not. All right. Anyway, she's gotten into a lot of trouble because people have been pressuring her to endorse Kamala Harris. Oh, Americans are so fucking lame sometimes, aren't they? You need your pop star to endorse your fave politician? God. Could you imagine an Australian celebrity endorsing a politician? G'day, guys. I'm Shannon Noll, and I'm throwing my support behind Anthony Albanese. Could you imagine the comments that would be under that post? Shut the fuck up. Where's my lawnmower? There's no fucking way. This, this is the thing. That again, it's because voting is uh, is a choice in America. So you, they they fucking need Beyonce to be like, yeah, you vote for Kamala Harris. Oh, I, I got to support the beehive. It's so like voting should be a chore and that makes you dislike all the politicians and that helps you hold them to account. If it's, if it's, if it's a choice, you got to really like the person or really fucking hate the other team. And that's how you get this poison stuff. And anyway... So she came out and she's she's been releasing like some videos on TikTok, like kind of talking about this because she she came out and she said, I'm not going to endorse Kamala Harris. And then everyone's been like, oh, so she likes Donald Trump, does she? So she wants to build the wall. I don't think that the woman whose entire career has, has been in, inspired by drag queens is going to vote for the anti-trans team, all right? I think what she's trying to say basically is that 
I can't endorse war criminals. And I think that's totally fair. Like, it, were I in America, yeah, I wouldn't lo- I, like, I would vote for one of them, but I wouldn't endorse either of them. And that's kind of what she's saying, which is like, look, all I can say is in my opinion, one of these people is less bad than the other, but I will not say that they're good, which is a perfectly reasonable opinion. And I would say that's the opinion that the majority of people on the fucking planet hold. You know, which is like, oh, it's either like you fucking, you you go, oh yeah, Donald Trump's crazy, but at least they're not like, you know, installing a senile old man and then swapping him out before the election for some woman who like won't stop the fucking war crimes happening in the Middle East that supports all of the, the wars and all this shit. Or you go, oh, well... This Donald Trump guy is a big racist and and he's obviously fucking crazy and corrupt. So I'm going to have to vote for this woman. It's like no one, most people look at both options and are like, yeah, yeah, oh, you, one of them is worse, you know? And that's essentially what she's saying. So let's have a look. This is the first video that kind of got her in trouble. People to use critical thinking skills learn about what they're voting for, learn about who they're voting for and ask questions. And it's being completely taken out of context per usual. There is nuance to what I say in interviews. And I think it's important that people use critical thinking. I think it's important for me to question authority and question world leaders and question myself question my algorithm question if some person that tweeted something about someone else is even true facts it's important to question because that's how i think we move forward this is my third election in voting and the world is changing so rapidly and i want to be part of the generation that changes things for good because we need it if you come to my shows if you read my full interviews if you literally know anything about me and for what I stand for, you know that this is not lip service. All right, beating around the bush here. There are so many things that I would want to change, so I don't feel pressured to endorse someone. There's problems on both sides, and I encourage people to use your critical thinking skills. Use your vote. Vote small. Vote for what's going on in your city. The change she wants to see in the U.S. is this election year she says instantly is trans rights they cannot have cis people making decisions for trans people period yeah i i feel like this is a perfectly reasonable response to a journalist trying to trap a very famous young girl into endorsing a candidate that she doesn't fully stand behind right she obviously doesn't like kamala harris enough to endorse her, but she likes her more than Trump. But that doesn't mean that she, like, that's so unbelievably fucking reasonable. And I feel like yelling at people that, like, don't pick one or the other of the big teams is why America is in in this fucking huge problem where the country is so split in into thirds, really, where it's like people on the left are just going with Democrats no matter what because they think they're less bad than Republicans. Republicans are going with the Republicans because they think they're less bad than Democrats. Both of them have fucking huge issues that neither of their party are ever going to solve that maybe independents would solve if anyone would vote for them. And then the third pretty much biggest group is people who just don't give a fuck because they know that neither big party is going to help any material problem that they have in any meaningful way because it's all poisoned by corporate money and corporate interests and people that want to win an election more than they want to run a country and help people that they're supposed to be representing. So, yeah, it's just... And also, why the fuck do you need to know what some under 25-year-old, under 30-year-old girl cares about... Like, she's there to fucking... Sing and dance, brother. 
I don't need to know who some fucking ranger in a corset is voting for to make my own fucking informed opinion. Her endorsement is not going to swing an election, dude. So anyway, after she said, she said this in that statement, she didn't, she didn't endorse anyone, right? Then she had to make a follow-up video to that because everyone was just, everyone just with the most poisoned uh, brains on the internet were going, oh, this means she's voting for Trump. And she just, she came out with a second video. I'm not going to play it because she loves a ramble. And she said, I am not voting for Trump. I'm voting for Kamala. But there are so many problems with what's going on in Palestine that the Democrats are refusing to fix in any meaningful way or engage with. There's so many problems with gay rights and all these other issues that she personally cares about as a voter uh, that she's not happy with how the Democrats are addressing. So she's saying that, yeah, I'm voting for this woman only, essentially only because I think the other guy's much worse. But I guess that's just, uh, I don't know. I guess that's the way that their country is set up and there is no perfect political system. And I guess like small incremental gains are better than it, than nothing. But it just seems like from an outsider, all I have watched Americans do for since like, I mean, I first, I, I first became old enough to kind of understand politics probably around Obama, Obama's second term maybe. And then after him, that was when I started paying attention and caring a little bit. And it just seems like ever since then, every single election is, we can't afford to lose this one. You have to vote for one of the two big parties because the other one will destroy the world. So you can't vote for issues that you really care about. We have to just, and it's like, I don't know, it just feels like no progress is being made at all because... It just swings left and right in tiny little ways and 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 everyone it just slows progress to a halt because those two won't work with each other at all when really it seems like what they need is like a, a huge fucking shake-up but no one will do that because that means voting for an independent party which essentially in their system kind of is throwing a vote away whereas in australia it's more representational and, and our system isn't perfect but at least you know with preferential voting you do get a much bigger chance at the little guy having an actual say and having a viewpoint um, by representing your interests and earning your vote. Uh, whereas, yeah, in America, it's like if your vote goes to the loser, it goes in the bin. It doesn't matter. Um, and that's how it gets so fucking teamy and left versus the right. And it's left versus right versus people who have just stopped caring because they have no faith in the system in general. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've, and, but okay. So now the update on this is because there's been so much fucking backlash over her saying that she, she will vote for the team that they wanted to vote for, uh, but she won't endorse them. Now people are just even more angry and upset at her. So now she's come out and the day before a music festival, she's canceled her shows. No warning. I, now I'm a little bit, I get the, that sucks, man. People spend so much fucking money going to music festivals, travel, hotel, flights. I've only ever cancelled one show in my life and it was because I was so fucking ill <laughs> that I literally could not get out of bed and then after that I I think I took a almost a year off because I just, and and I was going through surgeries and that. And I, I don't want to say that she's not going through it, but like if you're stressed about what people on the internet are saying about you to the point where you're canceling music festivals, it's like, I don't know. Don't cancel it the day before. I think that's the thing. It's like, if you are really fucked up, you got to do the show. And then, I don't know, then take a couple months off. Like cancel the ones that with a little bit more notice. I don't know. Who knows what she's going through? You can't really, on the other thing, on the other hand, it's also like fucking, sometimes you don't want to go to work. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really, I don't really want to be doing this podcast. My tummy hurts. I feel like I'm going to shit myself, but I know if I pause this to go to the bathroom, nothing will happen. So I don't really want to be here, but I'm doing my best for you and my Patreon supporters so that we can get at Garner enough support to buy the InfoWars desk because I have dreams and hopes and I want to make the world a better place. And by the way, the way I'm going to do that is by doing Spearhead Sundays from the InfoWars desk.
So anyway, guys, this episode is sponsored by great friends of the show, Manscaped. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS20 for 20% off and free shipping. This is really cool. They've got a brand new product that is launching very soon called The Chairman. This is great. <clears throat> Introduction. Hey, everyone. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the global leader in men's lifestyle and grooming. Every man knows the unbeatable feeling of a fresh barbershop shave. Now, what if I told you that you no longer have to wait weeks or even months between appointments to experience it? Well, leave your response in the comment section below. What if I told you that? How would it go? Maybe map out a conversation. Get ChatGPT to write up a conversation you and I would have and post it in the comment section. Introducing Manscaped's newest innovation, the Chairman Pro, electric foil shaver, the game-changing tool that brings the luxury of a professional shave right into your home. Whether you're after that daily silky smooth finish or prefer to maintain a rugged five o'clock shadow, the Chairman Pro Electric Foil Shaver is your go-to for precision and style every time. Oh, dude, I'm actually, I need this. I've been using the ball bag shaver on my face and it's good, but I, I need something a bit more precise because I feel like this is too long and a little bit messy, but I can't get it shorter than that without removing it. This is what I need, dude. I need one of these. And you know what? I, I got to get one with using the code SPEARS20 for 20% off and free shipping uh, this brand new razor. Shaver. Uh, head over to manscaped.com and join the over 11 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by using code SPEARS20 for 20% off and free shipping. Talking points. Do not read. Host shares a funny or memorable story about nicking his face with a different razor or other shaving mishap. How has Manscaped improved his grooming routine and boosted his confidence? What specific features of the Chairman Pro does he like the most? Good question. Uh, uh, part of the copy that I should not have read. Um, okay, here's a good one. Love shaving my ass with the with the lawnmower, uh, the, the newest lawnmower. Love shaving my ass with it. I remember one time I shaved, when I was much younger, I shaved using a razor on my bum hole and for for 6 hours it was great silky smooth and then for the for the for the next 2 weeks i lived in hell it was like it was like i duct tape sandpaper to either side of my hole and it was rubbing against each other and i had a red raw bum hole i looked like nicocado avocado posting on his only fans it was absolutely fucked but don't think about that too much because i think i may have been 17 you monster um, so, but now, dude, I use the lawnmower on my ass and, and, and I don't use that one on my face or my nuts. I've got two. All right. Don't, don't start saying that I'm a sanitary man and I wash it and I wash and I wash my ass every day in the shower. So don't start. So that there's my funny story. Lou Spears. I mean, manscaped.com. <laughs> use code Spears 20% off and free shipping. I actually can't wait. I got one. It's on the way. I'm excited to use it. Dude, you just wait till I start. That's how I'm going to really fucking chisel this jawline. All right. Um, all right. What else has been happening? Oh, I don't know if you guys saw the trailer for The Office, the Australian version. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about that. Like, I'm as an Australian, I just wanted to apologize to the rest of the world. I'm very sorry. All right. I don't know why this is being made i'm just i'm just embarrassed to be honest the office australia we've got a, a lady boss which you know is a really cool concept we've got it we've it's like the office but with a woman in charge uh but it's not parks and rec parks and rec already did that amazing brilliant show I feel like this is so unnecessary, dude. I feel like this is just one of those, like this is just the Australian entertainment industry, the Australian comedy industry, again, proving that we are just fucking incapable of creating anything new. Like there is a reason why every single very talented Australian just ends up leaving this country. And it's because there are no opportunities. No one's creating anything new. Every job goes to someone who's been on television for the last 20 years. You know, if like like if you turn on the television in Australia, every single comedian on TV has more gray hair than I do, except they're not fucking 30 like I am. They're all 50, 60. Australian TV is for old people in retirement homes and they will never give a job to anyone under 30 that's a, a meaningful role whatsoever. They're just not doing it. 
It's not going to happen because the executives are all 60, 50 plus, and they're the only the only priority that they have is not losing their job. So they don't take any risks. They don't rock the boat at all. There's nothing going on. This is television. This is radio. This is everything. I worked in radio. We got a shot. There was one person in the building that was really, really trying to push us. Uh, and But no executive wanted to take a risk on new young talent. So it just went to the same old people. And they're very good, these same old people. They're very good at what they do. But fuck. I don't, know how, I don't know how much longer you can start putting comedians that are like 55 plus on TV before the entire industry collapses. Because what you're going to end up happening, what, what, what's going to end up happening is these older people, the older generation that are very talented and are very good, uh, they're all going to retire. And then you're going to have no, no one with enough TV experience to replace them that is good enough because you haven't invested in new talent. Uh, and with the with the prolifer, pro, prolification of the internet and with the amount of money that people can now make on the internet and with touring and with merch and Patreon and YouTube and all that kind of stuff, any Australian with uh, any sort of talent and ability to garner an audience will just keep it for themselves, like I have, you know, building the Lewis Spears thing up instead of trying to fucking break into TV or radio or whatever because there's just a complete dearth of creativity. Um, I was looking at the the office trailer and the comments are just horrible. I feel sorry for the people that are in it, to be honest, because, you know, you're not going to say no to the office reboot on Amazon prime. It's probably a fuckload of money. Uh, and you probably sign on before you've even really seen all the scripts. You probably think, oh yeah, it's the office. They'll, they'll be, it'll be really funny. So you're probably hoping that it'll be good. But fuck, the comments are so brutal. Either it's a very unfunny show or whoever, hopefully whoever edited the trailer just doesn't know how to edit comedy trailers. But I don't know. They've got a, they've, they've got a, a lady boss. They've got uh, what looks to be a lady Dwight Schrude. And I just think that it's a completely unnecessary reboot because a lot of people are like, oh, why are they making another office? There's already been two. If you don't know, there's been way more than two of the office. There's obviously the English one. And that was very successful. And there's, then there was the American one, which was even more successful. But there's actually been lots and lots and lots of different um, reboots of The Office. But here's the thing. I think that's fine because they're all in different languages and in very, very different cultures, right? So England and America are very different to each other in, in lots of different ways. But Australia, especially Australian office culture, like it's like we're not that different from England or America. So I feel like it's just completely unnecessary. There's been an Indian office. Amazing, right? That's a great idea. I mean, I assume, I assume it's good. I don't, I don't speak the language, but there's been a bunch of different, the offices in different languages and cultures um, and ethnicities. And that's what these reboots should be for of, they should be for wildly different cultures to enjoy the experience of this hilarious show. But just creating an Australian version just seems like really fucking lazy, especially because we do already have an Australian office uh, that's on fucking, oh, the name escapes me. We've got um, Utopia. It's a, it's about, you know, Australian office workers in government running around just doing nothing and bumbling around. And it's very, it's very, it's a very funny show. This, it just seems, I don't know. It just seems like I see that and I just go, oh, I am, yeah, so making the correct decision in not wanting to be in this country because there's just a complete dearth. We're just too small, man. We're too small. There's not enough people, which means there's not enough money, which means there's like fucking 15, 20 people that control the entire entertainment industry and they're just giving jobs to mates and making sure that they don't take any big risk because they could get in trouble and lose their job and all they want to do is retire with the amount of money that they've made. That's it. It just sucks, man. Um, and I, I hope I hope the show is a lot better than the trailer looks. I'm not happy that it, that it, that it's getting dunked on. That's the other thing. Fuck, it looks... Like, I feel sorry for the people that are in it because you know that their social media are getting absolutely fucking bombarded with hate over what they would have thought would be, have been a great opportunity for them. And, you know, there are some very talented people in this show and it, and it, and it's like, it's not 
if the show sucks, it's really it can't really be the actors' fault unless they're bad actors, obviously. But if they act what they're given really well, but what they're given sucks, you know, there's only so much you can do with it. So that's a shame. It just, I don't know, it just looks very uncreative and lame and that's Australian TV because no one takes risks and anyone with a, a modicum of talent fucking leaves. I mean, you look at Raka Raka, one of the best horror films of the of the year. They, they fucking, they, they only really got it partially funded here and an American distribution company picked it up because no one would, like no one takes a risk here on something fucking new. And they were making videos for years here. And they could they they could and should have been swooped up by Australian businesses and companies way quicker than they did. But no one wanted to take the risk because Australians in charge behind the scenes look at the online thing and they fear it as competition. Uh, and that, ironically, is what is making them lose to the internet. Um, and also another thing is fucking... I don't know, this is a little bit too inside baseball. A lot of the management companies that manage all of the entertainers and the talent in Australia also own a lot of the production companies that make the television. So another big problem, and they all, and then, and then other ones own a lot of the venues, right, that you can perform in. So another big problem is the management companies are only giving jobs to their clients, uh, and the production, uh, the the streaming services and stuff hire a production crew, not knowing that they're that basically means that this uh, behind the scenes production team is going to fill it with only with talent under their umbrella. And that's not just the people on screen. That's also the people that are writing the show. So it's like this, you think you're hiring one team, but you get the entire fucking team and it's just all of it's funneling back up to this one management company. And there's, there's no diverse talent from lots of different sources is what I'm saying. And that's a problem. And that's why you have people like Ronnie Chang uh, leaving Australia and instantly getting on the fucking Daily Show in America and becoming one of the biggest comedians in the world and regularly posting about how much the Australian TV industry fucking sucks, even though he has no reason to do that because he's so successful. But he was he was always that good here and he never got a shot because no one took a risk on anyone that was new. And that's still going on. Anyway, guys, I'm on... Uh, Season two of F Boy Island. That's my, <laughs> that's my big opportunity. I think that I haven't watched any of the episodes. I think the last episode comes out tomorrow. Yeah, I haven't I haven't watched it either. Um, I I've watched the clips that they that that I'm posting. Um, anyway, go check that out. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we're gonna end it there. My tummy hurting. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. It was a bit disjointed and all over the place, but again, I feel like I need a poo uh, and, and shit myself, but I'm not going to. Um, but thank you very much for listening. I'm going to continue on on Patreon right now. It is up. Uh, check the description or the comments. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll get the link uh, to that. Uh, thank you for supporting the show. Thank you so much for leaving comments on the YouTube videos that I'm putting out and leaving likes and interacting with them in meaningful ways. Really appreciate it. The big swing is underway. The let's we've done it with the podcast. Let's see what we can do with YouTube, uh, and we'll see what's going on by the end of the year. I'm Lewis Spears. Uh, thank you for listening, uh, and I hope you have a shit one. Bye.